I just let my hair down from a bun from being it. <clears throat> from being in a bonnet at work all day and so it has this crazy kink in it <laughs> so if you're wondering why that's why hello guys if you are new here i have a six-year-old little girl and a three-year-old little boy so i don't have any babies right now but i did have an old youtube channel where i shared their birth stories um and I just kind of wanted to redo them for this channel. I went back and rewatched, and because I knew I would forget certain details. So today I'm gonna do Serenity's birth story, and she's my firstborn. Um, like I said, she is six now, but when I was pregnant, I liked to watch a lot of birth stories. So I figured, why not go ahead and make a video about it? My birth was pretty much went almost exactly like I wanted. Honestly, I feel very, very lucky. Um, it was induced and it was, um, I had the epidural. So anyways, we'll get into all that, but I have my notes right here. So I'm going to go based off of this. And if I keep looking down, that's why I'm trying not to like go half in the sun and half not, but, um, it's very, very sunny around like three o'clock. Okay. So let's start. Okay. So when I was pregnant with my daughter I had to go see like five different doctors it was always a different one every week literally like three or four of them told me you're not gonna make it to your due date like your body's doing what it's supposed to do it looks like you'll have her maybe around like 38 weeks or so and I was like that is awesome yay on September 28th 2015 I was 40 weeks and five days pregnant so I went past my due date and I was miserable. I was freaking so upset because of them telling me that. So with my son, I was definitely more laid back and like whatever happens, happens. I probably will make it to my due date. But with my daughter, I was like miserable. And I was like, I thought I would have had her like two weeks ago. So anyways, I was 40 weeks and five days pregnant. And they weren't even about to induce me yet. Like I went to my appointment at 145. It was just my last checkup. And then... Um, they were going to go ahead and schedule an induction date that day. I was about two centimeters dilated. I had been two centimeters for like three or four weeks, which is why they thought I would go into labor early. Cause I was like, my cervix was thinning and I was dilating and being a first time mom, they were like, this is really good. Like your body's doing what it's supposed to. So I went in and they did a checkup. I mean, they did an ultrasound to check her measurements, fluid levels, all of that. And they were like, okay, we're going to check this and then we're going to schedule you an induction date for next week. But the doctor had me come in his office. I was freaking out. I was like, what is wrong? Because I was, of course, like panicking my whole pregnancy. Um, it's just how I am. I worry about everything. And I think a lot of other people do too when it comes to pregnancy. He had me come in his office and he was like, okay, so your fluid levels are very low. And we're going to go ahead and keep you overnight. So... They decided to keep me overnight. They said they were going to induce me in the morning. So I was like, what the heck? <laughs> but I was so freaking happy. So my mom was with me. We like ran back to my apartment, got my stuff, came back to the hospital. I told my boyfriend at the time. And when he got off work, he met us up there. So I was at the hospital at about nine o'clock at night. They inserted a Foley catheter because it can help you dilate to like a four. It's like a, they put it in, I had to learn, like, do this in nursing school, but they put it in and it's really small and then, like, they blow it up and it's like a balloon, so it opens your cervix or whatever. And, yeah, so, I had that in all night and it did nothing. I was still a two. I was like, oh my gosh. At this point, I was kind of starting to panic because I was like, um, what if I get stuck and I end up having to have a C-section, which was really scary to me. I'm very scared of having my body open up like that like and I'm very scared of even being put under like all of that is very scary to me so anyways Tuesday the 29th which is which was the next morning like I said it did nothing so they removed it and they said go ahead and take a shower I don't know why they just literally were like go take a shower I guess they thought it was disgusting or something I don't know but or they were probably just giving me the opportunity opportunity because I wouldn't be able to for you know who knows how long but anyways 
So I was like, okay. And I took a shower. That was at 6.30 a.m. At 7 a.m. they started Pitocin, which I was totally fine with. I really never had a problem with that because my mom was induced with four out of five kids and she had really good birth experiences. And they say you typically mimic closely um, your mom's situation or whatever. And I was ready to get this baby out. So, and I was having contractions at this time. I just couldn't feel them. Like they were on the monitor. Anyways, they started Pitocin at seven o'clock. They came in to break my water like 30, 40 minutes later. And I was at a four. So I was like, oh my gosh, yes, thank goodness. Like this is working. I'm progressing. And yeah, so it was actually going quite smoothly. At about 8.15, I started feeling my contractions. They were a lot more intense. Um... Nothing like the ones I ended up feeling with my son, which is a different birth story. But yeah, they were like painful. I would like hold the bed. I was like, oh, they were coming every three minutes. I would say they were like a, maybe like a six or 6.5 on a pain scale. So it's like, they were painful, but nowhere. But because I know what they felt like in the transition phase, um, they were not, not that. They were nowhere near that. I watched so many birth stories before I had my daughter. And I swear, like, 90% of them were like, I was ready for the epidural and then I had to wait like an hour. Some of them didn't even end up getting it. And I was like so terrified of that. But before I even had to like beg for it, the anesthesiologist came in and was like, okay, are you ready for your epidural? And I was like, yes, I am. Thank you. So at nine o'clock, she came in. I was already six centimeters. I was progressing very, very nicely because remember it's nine o'clock. I started Pitocin at six. So in three hours I had progressed four centimeters, which is really pretty good. The epidural went fairly well. It's, but I do have scoliosis. So it took her a good while to get it in. Honestly, it might just have been her. I don't know because with my son, he got it in really quickly. Um, I believe, I think it was somebody else, but anyways like it took her like 20 minutes and um, let me tell you that if you're scared of getting the epidural the epidural is nothing compared to contractions because like i said i was at a six and so my the contractions were starting to hurt quite a bit and um like literally having a needle put in your back is nothing compared to when you're starting to feel your whole body like tense up it's almost like cramps when you need to use the bathroom and you can't like but it's like intensified so it took a while for them to get it in the only thing i didn't like is when they would press on it it was a weird feeling i didn't like that it was almost like they you had like a fresh bruise and they were like just pressing on your bruise or something like it was very weird and hard to explain but it was not painful compared to contractions so i got extremely numb very quickly i was somehow able to like shift my leg because I just wanted to see if I could, but like it fell off the bed and I could not get it back up. So anyways, my ex had to put my leg on the bed for me because, um, yeah, I couldn't feel it. I couldn't like, like I didn't have the muscle strength anymore to pick it back up. At 11.45, the nurse came in and checked me and she was like, do you feel any different? Like, how are you feeling? And I was like, oh, I don't know, like maybe a little bit of pressure. She's like, okay, well, you're at a nine. So I was at a nine already, which was awesome. But then I, I think it was epidural, it knocked me out. I was so tired, like, so tired to the point of, like, I could not make myself stay awake if I wanted to. Like, I was so anxious because I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to be time to push soon and I'm not going to be able to, literally not going to be able to stay awake. Like, I was, it was like I was on a drug, basically, which I guess I was if, you, if it was the epidural. It was like being on a drug that made you fall asleep and you cannot make yourself wake up. I took very long naps. Like I would sleep for 30, 45 minutes, wake up and be like, oh my gosh, I'm still so tired, fall back asleep. And finally I woke up and I was like, okay, I can keep my eyes open. Like, thank goodness. So finally at 3.45, the nurse was like, okay, you're out of 10. It's time to push. Thank goodness I was awake enough to push. I felt my contractions very lightly. Like when I would watch it on the monitor, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I do feel that. But it was not painful. It was just like pressure. So the, um, I started pushing at 3.45 and it was like, what was it? Um, 10 second intervals, something like that. Like every 10 seconds you would do, I don't, or no, you push for 10 seconds, three or four times. That's what it was. So I did that and 
literally it only took like 30 minutes or something let me look at my notes yeah like 30 minutes or so and she was like let me go get the doctor and we all know that when they say let me go get the doctor it's time to push that baby out the doctor came in and they were like do you want to see your baby's head and it like before then i thought that is so creepy i don't want to see that my camera just randomly cut off i don't know if i ran out of space or what so i deleted something but anyways um they asked me if i wanted to see and i was like yeah i do want to see so i saw a mirror and they were like she has so much hair and that really really helped me because i was like i'm literally about to meet her and boop I pushed her out and it didn't hurt at all. It's just I felt my stomach like cave in and that's the only way I knew she was out. So anyways, yeah, I pushed her out at 4.22 p.m. September 29th, 2015 and we were in room 4.22. So I always think that's like super interesting. She didn't cry like a lot, like she wasn't screaming. She just cried a little bit, which was enough to be like, okay, good. Her lungs are good. She's breathing. And then she peed on me, which was fine. I didn't really care. Like, you feel gross when you're giving birth anyway. So it's like, whatever. After a little bit, they weighed her. She was 7 pounds, 14 ounces. She was pretty big. Like, I thought she was going to be smaller. Like, not as small as the doctor that literally, like, right in the moment when I was about to give birth, he's like, she's going to be about 5 pounds. And I was like, 5 pounds? He was way off. But anyways, so she was almost 8 pounds, 19 and 3 fourths inches long. I ended up having a second degree tear, so I had to get a couple stitches, but I didn't feel them because I was still very, very numb. They were, they stung a little bit like afterwards, like using the bathroom and stuff, but it wasn't really anything terrible. And the absolute most painful part of it all was not even the birth or when I had her in my stomach, it was afterwards and they kept coming in to press on my stomach every hour to make sure there were no blood clots. I don't know why, but it was excruciating. It wasn't as bad with my son, but with her, it hurt so freaking bad. I like, I've never felt pain like that and contractions are pretty painful, but yeah, that hurt really bad. So that is pretty much it. Um, they took her away for like three hours and bathed her and all that, which when I had my son, they were doing things different. So by the time I had him, they do all that in the room, but with her, they took her away and I was like, oh my gosh, I've been waiting so long. I barely got to hold her. And then they took her away and did her hearing test and all that. And I will insert some pictures and videos of when she was an itty bitty newborn, but overall it was a very positive birth experience and it made me be like, okay, I definitely want to have another one or I'm not nervous to have another one if I do. And I feel very lucky for that because like I said, I watched a ton of birth videos and probably like 75% of them were like something was pretty badly wrong, like, and it was really scary. So yeah, that is it. I will insert, like I said, pictures and videos of her as an itty bitty baby and if you enjoyed this let me know and I will do my son's birth story as well in the next few weeks so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye guys